Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students. Um, we have a great lineup of institutions for you to hear from tonight. Uh, and I just have some quick housekeeping items before we get rolling. So first of all, you'll be able to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen anytime to ask questions of our presenters. I do think it's important to know um, that you should list the college name first or at least put the college name somewhere in the question so they know um, who you're directing their your question to. That'll help you get a better answer. Um, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off tonight, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why it's important you put those questions in the Q&A box. This is just one of the many sessions being offered, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available within one week um, at the strivescan.com forward slash Virginia. And so you'll be able to see not only tonight's presentation, but any other sessions that you might have missed. So without further ado, um, we, like I said, have an awesome lineup for you tonight. Um, you're first going to hear from Ryder University. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the College Fair this evening. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ryder. I'm the regional representative that handles Virginia, Maryland, and DC. Ryder University is located in New Jersey. We're about 45 minutes north of Philadelphia and about an hour south of New York, which puts us in pretty prime real estate. We're actually located in the suburbs with a lot of rolling hills around us about 10 miles south of Princeton University, which provides a college town, and about 10 minutes from Route 1, which has all the major shopping and restaurants, as well as a lot of business opportunities for our students for internships and co-ops. Ryder was founded as a business school in 1865, grew into a college, eventually into a university. So we have liberal arts and sciences. Obviously, business is a very strong and large major with us, as well as the School of communications and education, and finally, performing arts. I'm gonna start with performing arts first. That's really strong given our location. It is an audition-based program, and um, you would need to do a pre-screen and then audition for us to consider accepting you into the program. All of the other courses obviously do not have any kind of auditions. We are rolling admissions, which means that you apply to us Within six weeks, you'll have your answer. We do have early action, which is November 15th, and you'll know by Christmas. The only exception is back to performing arts. All of those students must apply by November 15th so that they can do their pre-screen as well as their audition in order to get an answer. Rider is test optional, and we have been for the past four years, so we know how to manage in this new age that we're all going through. What we look for is the common application or the rider application, your um, transcript from your high school, as well as letter of recommendations. And then we can, I would go on and read that, including your essay, and make a decision. There is not a separate application for um, scholarships. When I read your application for admission, you're automatically um, looked at for all of our scholarships which range from $11,000 to $20,000 a year. Uh, for financial aid, we take the FAFSA. So that's the only form that you have to fill out and put writer's name on, and then we'll be able to consider you. We're a division one school, but I always say to everybody, we don't have football. Basketball is our big sport. And uh, the fall we have soccer and field hockey for the girls, basketball, of course, in the winter. And then in uh, the spring, Baseball and softball are very strong sports for us. But if you don't want to play college uh, level sports, but you still want to be able to have a team sport to go to, we have lots of intramurals as well as club sports and over 150 organization and clubs that our kids are very active in. Probably the most um, popular majors are business, communications, performing arts, and the health sciences. There are two major health um, campuses 
companies near us, as well as three major pharmaceutical companies. So our kids have lots of opportunities um, to get some kind of experience. Starting this year, the president, as well as the board of directors have launched a brand new program, which is called Lifting Barriers. The whole idea was they took a look at the rising cost of education three years ago and felt like they had to start to think about how to address that. The way they did was we've dropped tuition by 22% so that our tuition next year is $35,000. Along with that program, we added a brand new office called the Office of Student Navigation. The people in that office are there to help bridge the gap between high school and starting college. You'll be assigned somebody that you work with in the office and they are your person. You don't know where the bursar's office is, they'll point you in the right direction. You're not sure how to get set up with any kind of tutoring or extended time, they'll point you in the right direction. So there'll be somebody helping you navigate your freshman year. The last part of lifting barriers has to do with our career center. We've always had a very active career center, but this year it's been a lot enlarged to be the marketing career center. And the uh, plan is to start with every freshman, helping them work on their resume, as well as looking at internships and co-ops with the idea that when they graduate, they will be employed or else have the opportunity to go to grad school. We've always had about a 95% placement rate, but we're looking obviously with this new addition to um, make it more like 100%. Um, we are open for limited tours. If you are interested in visiting, you can sign up online and actually see the campus in person. Otherwise, if you go to rider.edu, you will be able to take a virtual tour as well as participate in a lot of the sessions that our, our professors are doing to help students be able to learn more about us um, long distance. I hope you'll take advantage of that. And again, my name is Faye Rappaport. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much, Ryder and Faye. Um, audience, don't hesitate to put those questions in the Q&A. Next up, you're going to get the opportunity to hear from Davis and Elkins College. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending this evening. I'm going to start by showing you a quick video about Davis and Elkins College, and then we'll talk about some of those specifics. a lot different now. A number of things are uncertain, but it's in uncertainty that leaders rise. Well, COVID has presented a lot of obstacles to us as an institution because we are a hands-on institution. We're all about the individual relationship with students. Despite uncertainty, some things stay the same. But I would have to say the basis of Davis and Elkins, which is all about the transformation of lives, has not changed. Being in a small institution, uh, we get to know them so much better that they're not so much a number, more so we know their name. You won't just go to a class of 300 and be a last name. So that has allowed us to really see more of each other and become closer together. Students are encouraged to celebrate their diversity, express their creativity, engage in competition, and seize their futures. A lot of opportunity for students to be involved on campus. They can grow as leaders. They can rise to the top in a variety of ways on campus. We have student organizations that fit just about any thought, desire, or need of a college student. Anything from the accounting club uh, to the black student. You'll be exposed to new ideas and challenges outside of the classroom. Dini provides a different array of opportunities to the students because they do have connections. There's a big um, alumni base and a lot of successful alumni there that do provide opportunities for the students to, you know, maybe go do an internship or have those other experiences that you may not have at a larger school. During your time at Davis and Elkins, you will learn skills and tools that will translate to success in the workplace. Through DE, I was able to spend um, a full summer at Johns Hopkins University and West Virginia University doing um, biomedical research internships, which I don't think I would have been able to do otherwise. Our campus is nestled in the town of Elkins, West Virginia, where students are welcomed as part of the community. It is hidden, jewel area. We have some of the best fishing in the country, some of the best hiking trails, some of the best state parks. 
some of the best skiing. At Davis and Elkins College, the experience is about more than an education. It is about building a future. The most unique thing about Davis is being able to walk through classrooms and see four or five, like, you know, just that friendliness that honestly is the best what's like. It's like family. Uh, it's fantastic to have that, especially being 3,000 miles from home. The reason I chose Davis and Elkins College was because it was such a close knit community. Um, when I visited on campus for the first time, I felt like I was at home. I love being up in the middle of the woods and all the scenery and the architecture of the buildings. Community is a safe place, not only physically safe here, but it's a safe place for them to change their mind, for them to change their major, for them to change direction, and that we will be there to support them every step of the way because ultimately what we want is for them to find what it is that brings meaning and purpose to life. Things on campus may look different than the typical college experience, but our students have never been typical. Join us today in leading the way. So I hope that video showed you um, a little bit about Elkins and the college. I think, I don't know if you're seniors, juniors, or, or sophomores or freshmen out there listening, um, but I, I wanna tell you in your college search, um, you have certain priorities you're looking for for schools. <clears throat> um, in my mind, the priorities go, number one, the environment you wanna learn in. Um, and what I mean by environment is if you want a small school, a large school, somewhere in between, um, do you want a city feel? Do you want a small town? If you're not happy in the environment uh, you're going to college, then you'll probably not learn much and you won't last. So I think that's the number one priority is to just find a place that really fits your personality best. Davis and Elkins, we are a small school and we have roughly 800 students. So the professors really get to know you well. They know if you miss class, they know if you're struggling to, to reach out and lend a helping hand. Um, some things <clears throat> that may not happen at a large school. I personally went to a large school and didn't, do the, didn't go the extra mile to get to know my professors. So it was harder for me when I graduated to, to ask for letters of recommendations and things like that. At d &E, that won't be a problem because of the the small class size and the close interaction you have with the faculty. Um, another thing in, on the priority list, I think is number two for me, are just kind of the, the programs and the organizations. So depending on what you wanna major in, um, d and &E has most of the popular majors. If you're thinking about maybe engineering, I would say d and &E might not be the best place for you. Uh, we do have some really good programs in nursing, psychology, exercise science, um, biology, criminology, some of our top programs. And we also have a few unique offerings like outdoor recreation management, sustainability studies, and hospitality and tourism management. Um, we have a working bed and breakfast on campus and students get a, a lot of hands-on learning with that. Uh, we are rolling admission. Test optional this year. Our online application is no fee, no essay, so it's really quick to fill out, and I encourage you to do so at dewv.edu. Thanks and good luck. Thank you, Davis and Elkins. Uh, next up, you get to hear from the University of Mary Washington. Apologize, guys. My computer was acting a little wonky for a second there. Um, my name is Takira, and I'm with the University of Mary Washington. I have been with the University of Mary Washington for about 10 years now. 
Um, I'm an alum and currently in our MBA program, so I'm more than happy to tell you about our school. Um, the University of Mary Washington is located in historic downtown uh, Fredericksburg, which is about halfway between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. So we're in a, a pretty good location for both the small town feel, but the city feel when you would like to get that as well. Um, we have a population of about 4,200 this year. Um, so we're on the smaller side of a medium sized school. We have three different colleges and our colleges are the colleges of arts and sciences, business and education. Fun fact, we actually started out as an, a school for education for all women. We are now co-ed. Um, so no longer just the one, but we still primarily focus on um, education as one of our colleges. UMW does offer a lot of research opportunities. You can study individually or you can work with a faculty member if you have a faculty member that uh, you know it has a project that you are very much interested in. You are more than welcome to collaborate with them. There is funds set aside for the research projects for students to take advantage of. So we do strongly encourage that. UMW also has a lot of internship opportunities. We have an entire department that is dedicated strictly to helping you find an internship that you would be interested in. Um, so with that, they will keep track of all of the students that have done internships and where. They also keep track of who all is looking for interns now. Uh, they will also work with you on your resume. They will do mock interviews with you, the work. So they really, really try to help you guys um, get your foot in the door at a different job opportunity. And some of these internships you can do on campus, you can do them in a different state. We've had a student do um, the Disney program in Florida. And so she spent the entire semester there. So you have a lot of opportunities uh, with both the research opportunities and the internships there. We do have a study abroad program. Right now it's a little wonky because pandemic, but normally you can do the traditional study abroad that you've seen in movies where you study in like Paris or London for a semester or a year, but we have a lot of smaller trips that are attached to classes as well. Generally, anything on the safe list is good to go, um, and a lot of students really like taking advantage of those smaller trips. You go over break, um, and then a faculty member also goes with you, so you get a familiar face in your strange, new, exciting place, right? Um, so we have 150 different clubs and organizations that you guys can choose from. Some of them are sports related. You have the students that would like to participate in sports, but maybe not necessarily on the varsity level. So you have those as an opportunity. There are some uh, clubs that are related to majors. There are some that are vocals, some for dance, some just for fun, like our video game and anime clubs. So you have a lot of different options for that. Uh, I am a D3 school, so no sports scholarships. And like Ryder University earlier, no football either. We are not a football school. We still have homecoming every year because we can, and our school spirit just gets shifted to all of the other schools or sports that are having um, home teams at that time. So it's usually soccer, rugby, lacrosse, softball, um, and we'll go out and do a big tailgating experience for them. So that's a lot of fun. So with this page, um, a lot of seniors had a, a minor freak out because the world shut down and you guys didn't get to take your SATs or ACTs. I am already a test choice school and I was that way before the pandemic. So the only program that needed to be shifted was my nursing program. That is a direct apply from either the common app or from my personalized app that can be found on our website. Um, and with those two, the nursing program, you have to have a 3.5 GPA or higher, in which case you can remain test optional. Anything lower than that, I do need you to try and get in to take those tests. Um, on a normal basis though, I like I said, I am test choice. So you have the choice to send me SATs, ACTs, or nothing at all. It is entirely up to you. You still qualify for a merit scholarship. Our merit scholarships are either your GPA and your test scores if you took them and submitted them, or your GPA and the difficulty of your curriculum. So how many AP, IB, dual enrollment courses you've taken over the course of your four years. We do have three filing dates. Early decision is your binding agreement. So you can only do that with one school if they say yes, that's where you're going. 
Um, that one's November 1st. Early action is November 15th and regular decision is February 1. We do try very hard to assist with financial aid. So we do have $43 million in financial aid from over 450 different sources. Um, so please fill out your FAFSA form. That is the biggest source um, of help for you guys. Um, other than that, we are doing visits on campus. There are in-person visits as well as virtual. Part of our population did come back this year, so you unfortunately cannot go into any of the buildings at this time. We're trying to keep our students as safe as possible, but you are more than welcome to combine a virtual visit with an in-person visit to get the best out of that experience that you possibly can. Um, other than that, I hope to hear from you and or see you around campus and good luck. Have a great day. Thank you so much, University of Mary Washington. Um, holy cow, uh, we've heard some from so many great institutions tonight so far and we still have a few to go. So up next, you're gonna hear from Concord University. Hello and good evening, everybody. We are glad you got to join us, whether you're joining us right now or you're watching this in a recording. I hope that you're getting all the information that you guys need. Um, so my name is Maisie and today I have my coworker, Marcus, here. He's gonna be monitoring that Q&A bar down at the bottom. So if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to use that. Uh, we will communicate with you there and I'll get on to the presentation. So welcome to Concord. We were founded in 1872. We are a public liberal arts university. We have over 60 undergraduate programs, whether it be majors, minors, um, or other programs of study. We do have four graduate degree programs, and we have two campuses. Our main campus is in Athens, West Virginia, and then we have a Beckley commuter campus in Beckley, West Virginia at the Irma Bird Higher Education Center. A little bit about our programs and our faculty. So our top programs are education, biology, and business. We have over 110 full-time faculty. 73% hold the highest degree in their discipline. We do have a smaller average class size, which shows benefit for both uh, you and your peers in the classroom. Gets you uh, really close and connected to your faculty and your peers uh, and creates a better learning environment for you. Our ratio is right at 15 to one. All of our classes are taught by those professors that I'm speaking of, and all of our students have an advisor that is one of your faculty members, so they will know about you and your study habits, uh, and they're going to help you kind of get through your, your four years here at Concord. Performing arts is something that we take big pride in here at Concord. You don't have to be uh, a major for any of these programs to be able to participate. Uh, feel free to be in the choir as many semesters as you'd like in theater, band, anything on this list. If you have questions about it, uh, feel free to ask. We also offer a lot of scholarship opportunities for these performing arts programs. So definitely make sure if you're passionate about the arts, we want you to continue that here at Concord. Student activities and community service, there's always something to do on the campus, beautiful. Just to mention a few from this list, the Bonner Scholars Program is a service organization. We are the only public institution in the nation that offers the Bonner Scholar Program, so we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, it is offered at about $3,000 a year, and we'll talk a little bit more about that on the scholarship slide. Things like faith-based groups, political-based groups, honor societies, we do have national uh, Greek life on campus, fraternities, and sororities. Uh, and then again, like I said, the performing arts are a great way to get involved on campus as well. All right, if you're interested in being outside, if you uh, find it fun to go out and hike on a Tuesday evening, uh, or when it's cold, you want to go up to Winter Place and ski, we offer opportunities for that. A lot of our local businesses will offer, uh, scho or not scholarships, but discounts for Concord students as well. We have a really great relationship with them. Here's a great list of all of the places around us that are, uh, that our students take a lot of, uh, they take they take a lot of time to go to them uh, and uh, a lot of students will uh, go, you know, hiking and skiing, snowboarding, golfing, all of those things. So definitely if any of this piques your interest, uh, let us know and we can get you more information. Athletics, we are a division two school. So that does mean that we offer scholarships for athletics. We also have our esports team, which is killing it. Uh, they were number two in the nation for Call of Duty last year. Uh, so they have a lot of fun. If you are interested in being a college athlete, there's no better place than to do it 
to do it then at Concord. Uh, all of our athletic teams are like a family. Um, so if that's something that's important to you right now in high school, definitely uh, check out our athletics website, cumountainlions.com. Residence life on campus. We approximately have 700 students that live on campus. We do have six residence halls right now. We are servicing out of three of those, North Tower, South Tower, and Wilson. We do have opportunities for you to live within your Greek life uh, floor, or if you're in the honor society, or if you prefer to live on a substance free floor, we have options for all of those. Parking is available for all students. You can bring your car as a freshman to Concord's campus, and it is $50 for the entire year. If you are like myself and you like to eat, this slide will be important to you. We do have some great food on campus in our cafeteria. Uh, we do have a Starbucks cafe. If you like to drink coffee, we have great milkshakes there as well. Subway, of course, and Wingspan. So if you uh, have a big appetite, uh, definitely you'll spend some time in our student center taking uh, advantage of these dining options. All right, scholarships. So we offer over $21 million in financial aid, and that is huge because we are a public institution, although we function and feel like a private institution. We are test optional for admission and for scholarships this year. So if you have questions about that, feel free to let us know. Here in just a moment, you'll get some of our contact information. So definitely make sure to either take a screenshot of that or write it down. Uh, so if you are uh, testing or you have already tested, make sure to go ahead and get us those, uh, those test scores because they can increase your merit-based scholarship. Uh, things like the Bonner Program, like I mentioned, our alumni and our foundation scholarships are all in-house scholarships that we offer students. And you can find more information about that at our financial aid website. All right, get social with us. So if you have social media, definitely make sure to look us up. We are pretty easy to find, but here are the direct links in case you need it. We are offering tours on campus at 10 and 1 every day. Uh, please make sure to you know, maintain six feet and wear a mask if you do come to campus. We have an open house coming up on November 6th and 7th, so make sure to get signed up for that. You can find those links at concord.edu slash visit. And last but not least, here is our slide. Uh, myself, Amy Walker, and Alan Smith all split uh, the Virginia Territory, so make sure to screenshot this. And if you have any questions, myself and Marcus will be here the remainder of the night. Thank you. Thank you so much, Concord. Um, Maisie and Marcus mentioned putting those questions in the chat. So yes, last call, put those questions, any questions that you might have in the chat box at the bottom or in the Q&A button. Um, our next presentation tonight will be from St. John's University. Trying to unmute here. Hello, everyone. My name is Christine from St. John's. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Let's go share my screen and we will start tomorrow's presentation from the beginning. Excuse me. All right. So um, St. John's, it's in New York City. When people think of New York City, most times they think smack dead in Manhattan, tall buildings and open campus. But our main campus is 11 miles east of Manhattan. It is in Queens. Um, we sit on probably one of the highest points in Queens. And that's how you're able to see the Manhattan skylines from certain points of the campus. Now, as freshmen, you can apply um, to two of the campuses that we have, the Queens campus and the Staten Island campus. The difference between the campuses is size. So if a student wants something small and intimate, they would apply to the Staten Island. Um, our Queens campus is medium size. So Queens sits on 100 acres. We have 15,000 undergraduate students. So that is a medium size. Um, university, we have about 3,000 freshmen starting each year, whereas the Staten Island campus sits on 16 acres, has close to 1,500 students, about 250 freshmen starting each year. Um, just hearing those numbers, you can visualize just how different each campuses are from each other. Small and intimate would be Staten Island and medium size would be Queens. We do have a Manhattan campus, which is for upper level business majors, actuarial science, as well as risk management. Now we do have campuses abroad in Paris and Rome, and I'll be talking about that in a bit. Now we do have over a hundred majors ranging from accounting to undecided and undecided being one of our top five majors. Um, as an undecided student, a student can um, 
pick between four different tracks. If a student is thinking something in the sciences, you could pick BS undecided science. If you're thinking something in the business field, but not sure what, you can do undecided in our business school. We have a College of Professional Studies, which has majors such as computer science, homeland security, sport management, legal studies, communications, hospitality management, journalism, and you could pick undecided in that. And if you have no idea what you wanna do, you could just pick a, just a regular BA undecided. We do have a six year direct admit program in our pharmacy school, so a PharmD, and we have a actuarial science program, as well as I talked a little bit, said about our Homeland Security major. We do offer combined degree programs. So you can get a master's degree in a shorter period of time. So we have it within majors. So let's say you major in psychology, you could do a BA MA in psychology or we have it between majors. So a computer science major can also get a MBA. St. John's is one of the most diverse universities in the country. We are Catholic, but you don't have to be Catholic in order to attend St. John's. Last year, about 47% of our students identified themselves as Catholic. So we're diverse in religion and color and culture and socioeconomic status. And you physically see that diversity on campus. You will see students that look like you as you walk around the campus. Now, um, we really do um, encourage um, our students to be global citizens and one way we do that is by being as diverse as we are, but the next way that we do it is by promoting and encouraging all our students to study abroad. Again, we have a campus in Rome and Paris, but students are not only, um, they, they have many other options outside of Rome and Paris, but the most popular program that students choose to do um, is called Discover the World Europe, where you would do five weeks in Paris and take two classes, five weeks in Rome, on our Rome campus and take two classes, and five weeks in Limerick, Ireland and take two classes. And whatever scholarships that you get or financial aid gets applied to a full semester abroad. And freshmen can study abroad by doing this program that's called the Global Passport Program. And that's where you will go to our Rome, Paris, um, Rome campus or Paris campus at the end of the semester with your class. Now, the end game is to get a job. Um, it is our goal to get our students employed as soon as they graduate. Last year, close to 95% of our students were either employed or in grad school six months after graduating. Um, internships are key. The fact that we are in New York City gives you the opportunity to do internships year round. Um, a pretty cool internship last year, one of our Virginia students had was with the Jimmy Fallon Show. And um, we actually had Jimmy Fallon on campus, Google it, YouTube it, and you can actually view one of the residence halls in that video. Now sports, we are division one, Big East. We don't have football, but we are known for our basketball team. Half our home games are played in Madison Square Garden, but we have a really awesome soccer team. Last year, we got down to number two in the country. Baseball, we're up, I think in the top 15 and fencing each year, we are in the top 10. Um, we also have club sports that travel as well as intramurals. And then I talked about how diverse we are and that is reflected in the clubs and organizations that we offer at St. John's. So if you like to sing, dance, act or step, there is a club for you. We have clubs based on careers, based on um, religion, based on culture and color. And you know, getting involved on campus is really important wherever you go. Um, it helps combat homesickness. It helps um, transition from high school to college, but with us, it can also enrich your pockets. So if you're a president of a large student organization on campus, you get money towards your tuition. If you play an instrument and you on our pet band, you get money to towards your tuition. If you are a resident assistant, you get free room and board. Well, you work for that room and board, which brings us to um, residence halls. When I went to college, everyone shared a bathroom. It was in the, in the, on the floor. It was cinder block walls, but at St. John's, fairly new housing, what we call traditional, it's two rooms connected by bathroom or suite style living where you have a combined area, two rooms and a bathroom, um, two rooms and a bathroom. Freshmen can pick their roommate as well as their room type. Housing is guaranteed your freshman year. It's not guaranteed all four years, but I don't know any student that can. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know any students um, that who is a good student and a good resident that hasn't had the opportunity to live on campus. If you want to know more, it, there's my information. It is free to apply. We are test optional. We've been test optional for five years. We do give quite a bit of scholarships. And if you attend an open house, you do get $500 to as an engagement grant additional. Have a great evening and stay safe.
Thank you so much, St. John's and Christine. I would like to now invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras and um, give you the opportunity to either answer a question live that you maybe got in the chat or possibly share a fun campus tradition, something unique about your institution, or maybe just a straight up fun fact, or maybe just give some advice. Um, so we'll start and go in the order that we presented in. So we'll start with Ryder University. Um, okay, I'm going to give a fun fact, which is our colors are cranberry and gray. And the reason that they're cranberry is Andrew J. Ryder, who was the founder of Ryder University, was a cranberry farmer. He owned cranberry bogs right in New Jersey area. So every fall to celebrate the kids coming back to school and our founder, we have Cranberry Fest. And probably one of the highlights is if you come to the admissions office, um, you always end your tour with a uh, small container of vanilla ice cream with chocolate chips and cranberries, which was made especially for Ryder. You had me at ice cream, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, Davis and Elkins College. Um, something that really spoke to what it's like to go to D&E is our college president, <clears throat> knowing that COVID affected graduation and the seniors couldn't um, have their graduation ceremony, we decided to take our graduation ceremony on the road. So our president and VIPs from the college went to 11 different locations around campus to where as many students as possible could come to outdoor graduation ceremonies in late summer. So I thought that was just a, a really nice thing to do for the, for the students. Very true. Like, I think we wish, I think all colleges wish that they could have done that. What, what a great thing to do. Um, University of Mary Washington. Um, so mine's actually more of a fun tradition on campus. Um, we do Devil Go Day. So what it is, is the school gets divided up by your graduating year. If you graduate on an even year, like I did, you're a goat. Um, if you're on an odd year, you're a devil. And then the entire school participates in different competitions. So it's an all day thing. Um, there's food, there's music, there's all kinds of stuff. And uh, a couple of years ago, we actually broke our tug of war rope between the two classes. Apparently we got very intense, um, but that's one of my favorite things to do on campus. So my biggest piece of advice to students is come out and get involved. Um, you can definitely find your people in doing that and have a lot more fun. You'll, you can really get out of your bubble and, and experience some new things if you give everything a little try. Competition is healthy. I love it. <laughs> Next up, Concord. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to share some advice uh, and it goes to students. Thank you so much for joining us for our presentation. Um, the advice that I like to give is, uh, you know, if you're not necessarily familiar with the college, but you attend a session like this and you enjoy what you hear, uh, it's very important to uh, ask, reach out, inquire, and also visit colleges. Before you make your decision to go to college, always please visit that college and make sure that it is the right fit for you. So at Concord, one tradition we have for students who visit is to give away a free t-shirt, but uh, I just can't emphasize the importance of making sure you visit your school before you uh, make a decision of what school you want to attend. And I'm so glad that we have that on recording, Marcus, because that's um, such great advice. This is going to be your home for the next four years. So you want to make sure you try it on and just like you would try on your favorite pair of jeans or something like that. But yes, you have to find your people. You have to find a place that you know that you're going to be supported. And um, as Marcus said, reach out to the people like all these professionals on your screen. Like you might have realize that you had your parents or school counselors to support you or maybe older siblings or cousins but maybe you didn't realize that you had these professionals to help you at all of the colleges and institutions that you're really seriously considered so those phones do more than text they also make phone calls and um, these people are going to be your lifelines versus um, college confidential thanks marcus and next up um st john's I'm just going to talk about a fun tradition, my favorite tradition on campus. We have a winter carnival each Christmas, and we it ends with a tree lighting ceremony where we have 
choir singing, dancing, and it ends with a tree lighting ceremony with fireworks and, you know, hot cocoa at the end. So my favorite thing on campus. You can't beat hot cocoa and fireworks. That sounds awesome. <laughs> well, what a great night with great information from awesome institutions. Um, I'd just like to end with saying thank you for joining us. Please enjoy that senior year. If you're a senior, there's still lots to celebrate, even in a wonky year. Um, as you close out tonight, there's going to be a quick four question survey. We hope that you'll provide us some feedback. Sign up for some additional sessions, um, and you'll see on the screen where you can sign up for those at. And again, the recordings for this session and anything else that's happened tonight and previously will be available at strivestand.com forward slash Virginia. Um, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>